Well, I think there's a, a recognition among the European powers that obviously the, the JCPOA was a start of a process in many ways, that they wanted to negotiate with Iran on a, a range of other issues, including Iran's regional uh, activities. And I think that's what Netanyahu is basically concentrating on now. Of course, the situation has been made in many ways more difficult by the fact, the fact that the JCPOA has been uh, effectively sabotaged by the U.S. withdrawal. It was always having some problems, even prior to this, but uh, at the moment, obviously, it makes that much worse, and it gives less incentive for the Iranians, in a sense, to, to, to cooperate, even if, you know, prior to this, you know, the situation was not, uh, uh, was not great. Right, because it seems now that Israel is asking the EU for its support when just a few weeks ago, Israel refused to lend the EU Israel support in the Iran nuclear deal. So did, do you think Israel kind of missed a chance uh, to earn some concessions from Europe if it hadn't been so hard line against the Iran nuclear agreement? I think, I think if the Israelis, and I, you know, I should distinguish here, I mean, I think there were many Israelis who were probably critical of Netanyahu's rush to get, uh, to get Trump to, to withdraw from the agreement. I don't think there was any way the Europeans were going to get the Israelis to support the agreement. They've never really been in favor of it. Uh, they, they think it has too many flaws. But certainly the way in which it's been handled, I think, you know, uh, Netanyahu's rush, in a sense, is, is, is urgency, and the way that Trump has in, effectively um, pulled out without really exploring all the other options. I think, you know, many of them also in Israel would consider that perhaps a little bit less of, a, uh, of urgency would have served them better in, in, in the long run. Right. So tell us, as for Iran's part, how mm -hmm. serious is Iran now? about working on its uranium enrichment capacity? Well, I think it's going to make some strong signals in the direction of sort of basically trying to increase pressure on the Europeans to deliver. Deliver on things which I have to say I don't think the Europeans can. I mean, it's, it's very difficult for them to operate outside, you know, when they're facing extraterritorial sanctions from, from the United States. I mean, it, it's, it's a very difficult situation for them. And I think the Iranians, for their part, have uh, a very fragile uh, political and economic situation at home. So they're sort of balancing various needs. On the one hand, there's this sort of uh, desire to appear robust, not to be caving in. On the other hand, I think everyone must know that the situation domestically in Iran is, is not in a good position at the moment. The economics are, are very, very weak. The sort of peace dividend from the JCPOA after 2015 never materialized for various reasons. Um, and, and, you know, they're, they're in a, they are in a problematic p position. They are. Listen, though, I mean, do you think Iran would ever heed calls to move mm. its troops out of different areas mm. in the region? Or is this sort of pressure only really leading Iran to dig its heels in even further? Well, the interesting thing here is really uh, Netanyahu's diplomacy with Putin. Um, what was very striking, I mean, uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago, is when the Israelis launched airstrikes against Iranian positions in Syria, Putin was actually in Moscow at the time, and I think the Russians have already agreed effectively to try and move the Iranians away from the Israeli border in order to minimize the possibility of greater confrontation. So in that case, you know, in some ways, uh, Netanyahu's diplomacy has worked, but it's worked with, a, with someone who we hadn't really anticipated. We didn't think necessarily he would uh, uh, be collaborating with the Russians, but it seems to me that the Russians also are not very keen on the Iranians staying in Syria for a lengthy period of time. So Iran, again, as I said, has this sort of very awkward position it has to deal with. It has an ally in Russia that actually, um, you know, also, you know, in some ways sees Israel's point of view.